News Talk Sports 94.9 WSJM. Dave Wolf, Brett Bukowski, wrapping up tonight's St. Joe game at Dickinson Stadium. The Bears win 35 0 over Kalamazoo and Arts. And to say it was over early is an understatement. It was just less than two minutes into the game. St. Joe scores the opening touchdown, and they just kept rolling from there. Well, and St. Joe got the ball in great field position pretty much all night long, mainly because Lloyd and Arts went for and fourth down all but one time. And that one time was a punt that traveled 15 yards? Oh, well, about that, but it, actually, I mean, they should probably punt a little bit more. They're, they're really putting their defense in a tough spot when you give a team like St. Joe the ball in your, in deep in your territory. One time they gave him the ball in the nine yard. Yeah. I mean, that's just. But it is an improved Lloyd Norris, I will tell you that. I mean, based on how the east side is of the conference, Lloyd Norris could get four to five wins this season. And it's funny because they could go four and five and still miss the playoffs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, if they go five and four, they won't make it just because they're not going to get any power points. They could go six and three and not make it like Dull Lake last year. just depends on strength of schedule. St. Joe's getting a lot of power points. Because tonight you uh, had Edwardsburg and Niles both roll over their opponents. So, mm-hmm. you know, and St. Joe also played North Side, a Division One opponent. Yep. There's points there for St. Joe. Plus two wins. Yep. And so, you know, St. Joe's three wins so far are coming against all teams that are 2 and 1. So the rest of the schedule has not done that well, but we'll see how that plays out throughout the season as we had more uh, conference or division games. You know, the, 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 what is a little discouraging. You know, coming this ball game, there was only two teams left in the conference that were undefeated, and that was Kalamazoo Lord Norris, which no one would have picked, and St. Joe at 2-0. The thing that St. Joe has done on offense all three games, and they did it especially tonight, is that very fast-paced offense. And not only does it <laughs> annoy the stat keepers here at St. Joe, but you it, you? Well, yeah, and Chris, uh, the, uh, the girls' soccer coaches do stats. But, yeah, but it keeps the other defenses just – not able to recover, not able to catch their breath. And when you're dealing with that on every single drive, that just, it wears at you. And St. Joe just wore at Norris early and often. Well, and in addition to that, Dave, it doesn't want you to substitute. Yeah. I mean, how do you get, how do you get defensive linemen off in 10, off and on in 10 seconds? You don't. And so you're right. And, and I think it also wears down the opponent and St. Joe being blessed to be able not to have to have a lot of players play both ways is able to play at that fast pace. And with this warm weather, teams wear out. And I will give Lloyd Norris credit. I thought their stamina was very good tonight. They're a very athletic team, and they proved that they have speed. They have skills. I mean, the uh, the one interception that St. Joe threw at the end zone, a great play by the defender to yep. pick off the pass. And, and we mentioned it last week, but you know, we had a knock on wood, but didn't, apparently it didn't work. But St. Joe did have three turnovers today. But the Bears counted that with three uh, – recoveries of their own. Yeah, and uh, I thought Evans, quarterback for Lori Norris, there's a lot of potential. He, he's got to be six four or 5 back there, kind of like a can do. I just don't know how much experience he has. But Lori Norris is an improved program again. I think St. Joe came out, ran the ball well. Uh, Chapman in was 61 yards, crossed from 52, 56 of that on the keeper off that deer offense that they do, crossed from 6 of 10 passing. And his passing is really, he's getting a nice touch on it. Yeah, he's getting it up there. He's allowing uh, the wideouts to adjust. I thought Schmidt went up and had two great catches of making that adjustment there. Bobby DeLong makes it the most of his two catches, two touchdowns. You can't be more efficient than that. And I think on, on the defensive side, I've been really impressed with Isaac Cody all season. We yeah. named him our player of the game. Yes, and I did find Isaac Cody does wrestle. He oh, does I wrestle. think so. Yeah, I would hope so. I mean, the way he throws people down. Um, but... Yeah, we named him our player, our laser graphic player of the game. He only played one and a half quarters, but he he sets the tone so much on defense. It's hard to ignore it. Well, I mean, every time you know there's a play uh, tackle for loss, he's in the backfield. If Correct. it's not him, he's disrupting the play and directing the uh, offensive of players towards his his uh, help. Yep. And I think the other big positive you take out of this game, uh, Dave, is the fact the second and third unit played the entire second half on defense and did not give up a score. And especially when they, when Norks had it when first and goal at like the five yard four line, yard, yeah. four stops, and yep. uh, St. Joe stops them at the two yard line and able to run off the last bit of clock. And thankfully, it was easy because the running clock was in effect. Well, and I think, you know, it does a couple of things. One is it, it allows your starters to rest, which cuts down on the opportunity of an injury. And they've had two hard games, physical games with Niles and Edwardsburg in week one and two. 
But the, also, the other big thing that people don't talk about so much, it sets the tone for practice Monday, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday. When, when men and women in whatever sport they are, if they know, they're if they do their job, the coach is going to let them play. Mm -hmm. um, they do better in practice. I mean, who doesn't? It's just no different than us going to work. If we get a paycheck and we get a little pay raise or something like that, you, it's just how life is. And so Prattley, to his credit, has, I think, mastered the fifth quarter rule. I think he plays that as well as any coach I've seen since that came into effect, what, four or five years ago? Yep. He knows how to use it <clears throat> from a freshman level to the JVs. And he doesn't, he doesn't call them freshman JV. He calls them varsity B, varsity C. Um, and then you get the guys who play two quarters out here. And, you know, if you're a sophomore or junior, you're not playing a lot. You, you cannot but be happy you got yeah. to play an entire half. So those that that is priceless, I think. And we'll talk about it tomorrow, Coach Show. Priceless to get those guys opportunities. And the other part is the coaches now can grade those players yes. in a varsity game. And they have film, so they have yep. they have work on tape yep. that they can that the coaches can look at, can critique, correct, and because these guys are gonna be the starting guys when they come up in the next year. Or if someone yeah. gets hurt, you know, which you know you hope never happens, but it's football. And so I think uh, St. Joe's coaching staff is, is rolling. I think they've got it. You know, I, I've said this last two weeks, St. Joe's got a shot to go 9-0. It's not a, to jinx them. It's just looking at the schedule. I mean, there's you know, still got Lakeshore, which is struggling. It's going to go probably 0-3 tonight. Portage Central to end the season at Portage. You still got Portage Northern. Uh, they need some other games that probably could end up like this. So yeah. the key is how do you get better? You don't want – sometimes when you when I coach – Sometimes your opponents just aren't good enough. It's almost worse than practice. Yeah. So how do you make a game where you get better? And I think tonight I liked what I saw. Um, is it Hopkins? I thought he did a nice job kicking. Filled in for Player. Yep. You know, Player is nursing a uh, hands, uh, groin issue, and you're not going to let him kick until it's totally healed. There's no reason to, because otherwise you just keep aggravating. But next week, St. Joe goes on the road to play Gull Lake. Like, as you know, Dave, uh, like, Loy and Arson yep. took a two or three year break from the smack in football to try to rebuild it and be competitive. We'll see how it goes. But uh, again, that should be a, a game St. Joe should win. But you got to take care of business Monday through Thursday and make Friday count. It'd be, it would be uh, Gull Lake's first ever win against St. Joe. So really? there, there is motivation. I mean, I mean we, we saw the first game St. Joe played against Gull Lake. It was the playoff right. game in 2006 at yeah, Gull Lake. That was a tractor they, pull. It, it was a tractor pull. And Remember basically, that? it was mud. Oh, yeah. Well, it was mud at, at Gull Lake. And the uh, the second time they ever met was here at Dickinson City, which was a blowout win for St. Joseph. I had a friend of mine clean his gun at home when I said something about the tractor pull. It was the LU's like first year. He about, he about pulled the trigger. He was laughing so hard on that. But, you know, you never know. Look at look at Northern Illinois, which I love from the Mid-American Conference, mm -hmm. walking into Notre Dame Stadium, which I know you're very happy about, <laughs> upsetting Notre Dame. And probably, cost, I, I didn't say it cost Raymond his job at Dickinson City. Uh, we'll worry about Notre Dame later because I'm not worried about Notre Dame, but I'm worried about Michigan. But uh, St. Oh, Joe, yeah, who they got? Arkansas State. Arkansas State, uh, Michigan State, I believe, has Prairie View A and M. Prairie View A and M had the longest, long, longest losing streak in the history of college football. Speaking of losing, Prairie View, I think, is a one double A team that doesn't offer athletic scholarships. Wow. Speaking of uh, losing streaks ending, uh, one of St. Joe's opponents over the uh, last couple of years, Alchemist. Ended a 41-game game losing streak with a win last week. You know, St. Joe beat them, as you know, 70-something to nothing a couple years ago. But the fact that that team showed up with yeah. 15 players when they could have just forfeited, I always give them credit for that. In today's world, too many people say, eh, I'm not going I'm I'm to walk away. No, well, they came and, and kudos to them. They got a, a victory. They got the new right name, by the way, the Wolves. I kind of oh, like yeah, What was their name? It was the Chiefs, oh. but now they're, they're the Wolves, and, you know, I like that. Yeah. I'm very in favor of favor of Wolves. Why is that? Um, you like so, Wolves? Yeah, some some name, you know. I guess. <laughs> Why do you like the Wolves? You gotta explain this. Uh, last name Wolves. You know. Oh. I'm sorry, they don't have a team called the Witkowskis. No, well, that's the Polish national team, <laughs> and we're still stuck in uh, Warsaw. St. Joe coming away with a 35 nothing win over Kalamazoo and Lark, Loy Norks to go to 3-0 and on the season. They go to Gull Lake next week, and Gull Lake, as we know, uh, right now is 0-2. I don't know what they did tonight in their uh, opener of their uh, rejoining of the conference. But St. Joe's 3-0 and on the season right now. will be at Gull Lake next week. 
at 6.30 with Joel Cordes and Brett Todd, no team name after him. For Fort I'm going to buy my own team like like uh, Paul Brown. He started up the Cleveland Browns and named the team after himself. The Witkowskis. Witkows. Witkows. Skis. What's it called? The Skis. The Witkows, you should have a, like a cow pattern as a jersey. Uh, actually, my uh, wife's aunt made a flat horse, a cow on skis. Okay. With cow skis. <laughs> How's that one? You make a good winter sports team. Yes. For Brent, Joe, I'm Dave Wolf, WS James Sports. St. Joe wins 35 nothing.